How's it going everybody? Welcome back. In this video we're going to go ahead and kind of do a quick configuration when it comes to setting up CSR2 with CSR5 and 6 for crypto map configuration so that we could basically simulate a multi configuration between uh, with crypto maps with multiple entries on it. Let's see exactly how that comes into play. So we're going to add some details to CSR2 to allow it to connect to CSR5 and CSR6. So we'll be modifying access lists and stuff like that as we need to and things like that. And then on CSR6, we're basically going to be doing what we did on CSR4. We're just going to dump the config. What I won't be doing is spending a ton of time on breaking down each little individual configuration because we did that in the one peer video where this video we're basically getting ourselves to where we have multiple peers attached to a single hub and we're doing site to site VPN with that. So we want to be we got to be quicker about it in terms of the configuration. So that's going to be where we, we go. I will break it down whenever we get to an area that needs to be broken down. I'll explain those details. But uh, right now it's just a matter of let's get it up and running as quickly as possible. And then we can dive into the details as we need to because I don't want to rehash stuff that's we've already covered. So with that being said, on CSR2, we need to look at a couple of things. So the first thing we need to look at is the show run section access list. Now you can either keep going with the same access list or you can create new ones. And the reason why I say that is we look at the crypto map. Right now the crypto map calls this ACL. So I can create other ACLs that match on different traffic type. So I can match on 17225, 17226, so on and so forth, or 192168, whatever the case might be. I recommend doing it that way instead of trying to pack everything into a single ACL, because then with the ACL, you're processing it from top down, right? So the first hit, you stop processing. So I definitely don't ever want to be in a situation where the VPN won't spin up because when you've hit the first line of entry or you you're continuing through the processing where you potentially could miss traffic. So I like to use a different ACL per crypto map entry and that, that's just my preferred way of doing things. So with that being said, we're gonna come in here and type an IP access list extended ACL and we're gonna do uh, CSR seven to CSR five VPN traffic. One of these days I'll get the get it all right here. There we go, and then we're going to type in permit IP of 10.1.0.0.0.255.255 to 172.25.25.25. Slash 16 wildcard. There we have it. Everything else is pretty much the same. We don't really need to do a whole lot of anything else. I will come in and create a crypto map of CMAP, but this will be sequence number 20 of IPsec Isocamp. The, the set the peer will be 51.0.0.5. The set the peer will match address and we will match on this guy right there. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Do show crypto real quick. And the other thing we have to do is we have to add in an address to point towards CSR5. So it's 51.0.0.5 and go something like that. And that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward stuff. Doesn't need a whole lot of details to dive into what whatever it is that we've got going on. That's pretty much all we need to worry about. So very quick on the, the hub side. The on the spoke side, not so much. So show run section crypto. So we're gonna basically take the configuration that we have here. We're gonna dump it into notepad and we're gonna work our way through how all that type of stuff comes into play. So we're gonna grab Notepad. And this is something that I recommend everyone that does this does because it can be, uh, become rather time consuming. Now, because of the fact that we aren't gonna be dealing with multiple, crypt multiple crypto map entries on the spokes, just on the hub, we can get away with, we can be a little more flexible in terms of naming conventions and things like that, but I still recommend anytime you can to be specific because it helps anyone that's looking at the config to know what's going on. Named ACLs are there for a reason. So we're gonna go ahead and whack this stuff right there. 
I'm going to come in here and you the same information is going to be specified here. Um, the peer will be 21.0.0.2. I'm just going to be changing the the source is going to be 25. And we just want to make sure that we do the same thing on CSR2 if we match that correctly. And do show run section crypto. This is where it's like, okay, let me just make sure. Do show IP access dash list. And we do, we have an entry in there, which is good. So we, we are matching that as the destination traffic. So that is exactly what we want to have. So that's pretty much it. So we're going to literally take this a few lines of config. I'm actually going to move the access list to be further ahead in the, in the syntax. And the reason why I'm doing that is because um, it comes, um, if you don't have the access list created when you go to deploy the crypto map, the crypto map will barf and tell you it won't work. So uh, I'm going to come in here to interface gig one and crypto map C map. I'm actually going to come in here on here. I'm going to type in this will be CSR uh, eight to CSR seven VPN traffic. And I will grab that that name, and then I will pop this in right there. So we want to make sure everything is matching up as we can, and that'll pretty much be it. So on CSR5, that'll be our syntax. We'll go ahead and jump that in. There we go. Isocamp should come online here in just a minute. And if we do show run section crypto, we should not have any issues showing up in here, which we don't. On uh, the next thing we have to do is CSR5 to CSR8 is on CSR4. If we do a show run section EIGRP, we will turn EIGRP on there. So let me go grab Notepad again. We'll just make a small minor configuration change here. And then we'll just make this uh, 5.8. And like so. On 5, we will drop, drop that in. On 8, we will show run section EIGRP, go to global config, router EIGRP VPN, address family IPv4 Unicast VRF S5, autonomous system 100. We're going to type in network of 10.5.8.0 slash 24. That'll get the peering to come up, which it does. And then we'll type in network of 172.25.0.0 as well as 192.168.50.0 slash 24. Now, one thing I don't have currently, oh yeah, I do. I do have it set up, is I want to advertise those routes. So if I do show IP route uh, BRF S5, we can see that we have a default route from EIGRP. If we look at CSR5 and do show IP route EIGRP, we have those routes showing up. So that's great. So now what I get to go do is minimize this configuration and jump out of global config. I'm going to go over to CSR7 show IP route and we're going to do a, uh, we're going to do a ping to 172.25.0.8 I believe is the IP address it is and on CSR7 I'm going to source that from loopback 0 and send the ping and of course it works right we look at CSR2 we do a show crypto ISA SA Guess what? We have two connections up, one to four, one to five. If we do a show crypto IPsec SA, we have a couple sets. We have this top one pops up. If we actually type in here and say peer of 51.0.0.5, we'll get just its outputs. And if we look in the output, we see that we're matching a 10.1 and 172.25. And if we look back over at Wireshark, we will have additional configurations and here we actually caught the entire setup going back and forth between the, the endpoints. So we'll actually be able to see the entire um, configuration setup 
So here we have the isocam going out. We see UDP going back and forth. ISOCAM providing the information that we need and going back and forth between the endpoints to, to figure out what's happening. We know it's in main mode, we go through quick mode, and then eventually we end up ju jumping into uh, the rest of the configuration and stuff like that. So we see with main mode there are six messages. So in this first one here, it's just the security association, negotiation of NAT, and things like that. NAT, uh, negotiation, negotiation of, uh, of NAT traversal and identity protection. And then if we look down here in the third one, we have identity protection, dead peer detections being negotiated, which is not turned on currently. We have, I'm not sure what Cisco Unity is. This would, this would be X off. If we were doing easy VPN, that would be where that would come into play. And then Message five is going to be identification, and then message six is going to be it wrapping up and finishing out what it's got going on. So we're just going to minimize that. So as you can see, that's basically the, the syntax. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get CSR six up and running as well. So we're just going to repeat the process one more time and go through it very, very quickly so that you guys can see how all this stuff co comes together. So. Basically, wash, rinse, and repeat on CSR2 side. So, show run section crypto. We'll see that there's multiple entries in the crypto map. We'll do a access list configuration. We will say uh, very similar name and naming structure to this to be CSR. I said five. That that's acceptable. We'll do six, and then we'll type in permit. Uh, IP of 10.1.0.0.0.255.255 to 172.26.26.26 stuff like that. That's pretty much all we need to worry about. Now, you might be wondering when we look when we were looking at the IPsec configure the outputs right here that we're matching just on IP. Is it possible to go ahead and match on more specific protocols, be uh, namely just TCP and UDP flows? 100%. You would just have to configure your access lists appropriately for that. We'll take a look at that in an upcoming video of how you can be, how you can kind of filter things out as you, if, if you will, and that type of stuff. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab crypto map C map, and we'll say sequence number 30 IPsec isocamp. We're going to set the peer to be 61.0.0.6, and we're going to match on the match address of this guy right there. That's pretty much it. And then section um, crypto, I need to come in here and set up a 61.0.0.6. That's pretty much all I have to do there. And we should be squared away on that setup. Now I'm gonna grab notepad from earlier and I'm gonna use this configuration to help me along with the configuration that I have set up on this device. So 26 will be the source and then this will be CSR. We're going to make this a little bit different and uh, this will be, this is technically CSR 8 to CSR 7 but I'm going to make this CSR 6 to CSR 7 just so it's a slightly different configuration. I'll make this CSR 6 to CSR 7 and we are going to set the same, uh, our phase one policy is the same. We're just changing the access list and uh, the peers right. And then we're just going to say this will be 6.8 on this side and we'll be squared away there. And we're just going to grab all that syntax like so. Jump that on to 6. Like, like that. We're going to jump back over to CSR 8 and we're going to exit out a couple of times. Do show IP interface brief. I need to create an interface loopback 172.26.0 and type in IP addresses 172.26.0.8 slash 24. And then a loopback interface loopback of 
loop back. 192, 168, 60, and IP address of 192.168.60.8 slash 24. And that's pretty much it. So now that we have that squared away, now I get to go to, um, actually I need to put those into VRFs. So interface, and I'll just grab this information right here. VRF forwarding is gonna be S6. So I'll just drop the IP address back on there real quick. And then for interface loopback, there, S6, and then I'll just put the IP address back on real quick like so. So do show IP route VRF S6. There we have it. So now I just need to do do show run section uh, EIGRP. And the EIGRP syntax is pretty straightforward. Router EIGRP VPN, address family IP4, unicast VRF S6, autonomous system 100, network of 10.6.8.0, slash 24, and then a network of 172.26.0.0, and network of 192.168.60.0. Now if I go back to CSR6 and do show IP route, we should see those routes showing up in the routing table. Now I get to go back over to CSR7 and do a ping to 172.25.26.0.8, sourcing from loopback 0, and send the ping. And there the ping goes. Next thing I get to go do is CSR2, jump out of global config, do a show crypto ISA essay. And voila, I have a third peer up. Uh, show crypto 61.0.0.6 for the peer. And we can see that packets have been sent and received. If we look at CSR6, do show crypto ISASA. Everything's good to go. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how that would come into play. We have multiple peering set up. I wanted to show you with multiple peers. In the next video, we're going to go look at setting this up between an iOS router and an ASA and walk through how all of that comes into play. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for stopping by and we'll catch you guys in the next video.